I've got a treat for you guys today. I didn't have anything else for a video and I felt like making a video, so this one comes out of my personal stash. Before we get to this one though, I'm going to have a few disclaimers. The first is that you're going to have to forget everything you think you know about laws. The second is that you shouldn't come away from this with an absolute opinion. Everything I'm going to say is subjective, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not your lawyer, and the laws change based on the whim of tyrants. That being said, I have an extensive knowledge of these laws because I'm legally required to have an extensive knowledge of these laws so that I can own things and comply with these laws. And everybody who wants to own something has to know every single one of these arbitrary and capricious laws. Everybody who sees today's video subject is going to call this something else. They're going to arrive at a conclusion either correctly or erroneously because of what they consider to be the law. You can have questions about this, and questions are always welcome. There's no such thing as a dumb question. Another condition on top of this that I don't want to hear the word loophole mentioned a single time. With firearms laws and firearms rights, there are no loopholes. Anything that seems asinine or like an extreme measure, an unnecessary complication, isn't a loophole, but it's what I have to endure to follow the law. The subject of today's video is this firearm. This firearm is a Browning Auto 5 pattern action, and it fires a 12 gauge cartridge. However, you can't call this a shotgun. You would be inclined to call this a shotgun. It functions like a shotgun. It does everything that a shotgun does, and this could be a shotgun. But there's about five different ways to arrive at this, and only one of them is allowed. I'll explain this further. The ATF's exact definition of a shotgun, under the National Firearms Act, includes strange, subjective, or objective terms. Shotgun includes definitions such as intended to be fired from the shoulder, designed to be fired from the shoulder. That's the most important part of what you're looking at here today. You also have to include the definition of a short barrel shotgun. A short barrel shotgun is made from a shotgun in its definition. It no longer is a shotgun, but is a non-NFA to NFA item that originally started as a shotgun and is now a short barrel shotgun. I'm going to call it a shotgun here for brevity. It also does not have a stock. It has a pistol grip, and very importantly, an overall length of 26 inches. The overall length of a firearm is measured from the end of the barrel. This one is cut at an angle and sharpened. Specifically, it ends at the encircled portion of the barrel. Any protrusion beyond the barrel that is not permanently attached and encircles the cartridge is not included in the overall length. It goes to the rear of the firearm. This only includes parts of the firearm that serve a purpose or a function that make the firearm work. The grip, of course, is necessary for this to be a firearm, a functioning firearm. However, this little inch extrusion on the back here is covering the recoil spring assembly, covered by this little cap right here. Originally, this would be a wood plug. I have a Midwest Industries aluminum part. Otherwise, it would simply fly out the back of the gun. So this is measured from the full extent here, parallel with the bore, to this point in the barrel where it's fully encircled. It's over or equal to 26 inches in length. Now that I've gotten all the legal nonsense out of the way and pacified any concerns people are going to have with me posting this firearm on YouTube, let's go ahead and explain the choices that I made in assembling this firearm. Now, of course, I didn't make it into a shotgun because I was given the rare opportunity to make this instead. I mean more so why it looks like this. I've got a walking liberty embossed in the stock. 
and the sling, because I got a little crazy at the craft store. I've got a braided leather sling with some nice little silver bits on it. The sling is three points for a functioning purpose as described, but I went with this black and stainless because this frankly looks like something either a vampire hunter or a vampire would own. And I am all about that. Furthermore, I'm going to be assembling a case custom for this firearm out of Brazilian walnut shaped like a teeny tiny little baby coffin because I find that hilarious. I've only got a few videos of me firing this thing and they're really not that impressive. Didn't dress up or anything stupid, but let's get some B-roll just for the hell of it, and we'll call this video done. Now, if you want to be annoyed, pestered, questioned, possibly detained, every time you go to the range by concerned boomers, and zoomers alike. You can get a stripped auto five receiver most likely from Sarco right now because this isn't a one and only. This is the first and only I have seen assembled, but they're out there. And if you so choose to create one of these, go ahead and price out every individual part you think you'll need. Keep in mind, you can also use Remington Model 11 parts. If you use a Model 11 fire control group, you can use a Model 11 stock. They have a different angle at the grip here. You can use a Model 11 barrel and a Model 11 bolt. However, you have to use a like bolt and barrel, whether it be Auto 5 or Model 11, because the Model 11's extractor is configured differently from an Auto 5. An Auto 5 also has a magazine cutoff. This switch prevents shells from loading from the magazine tube, thus, just like a Lanfield or a manual bolt-action rifle, it will lock the bolt back every time, and I can drop a new shell into the action, single loading, instead of loading from the magazine. And then I can disengage the magazine cutoff, and it will load from the magazine. Not a very useful feature, but it's a feature that's fun to have, and it's not on the American Model 11. I don't really have a closing statement for this video. I just hope that I've either entertained you or inspired you to make something really, really ugly.